April is Earth Month, a time to celebrate our natural world. It's also a call to reflect on our impact and think of new ways that we can protect and restore the planet. I'm Ginger Z, Chief Meteorologist at ABC News. My family and I are hitting the road to help rebuild and get a first-hand look at what it takes to save the planet. Adrian on board, Miles, my husband Ben, and me, leading the way through this epic eco-adventure, all in the name of science. We're branching out! More than three trillion trees live on planet Earth. And I know, that might seem like a lot, but wildfires, disease, and clear cutting now destroy as many as 15 billion trees every year. Today, my family is hitting the road with National Geographic explorers and writers to see how we can fix our forests. So we went out in search of solutions, starting in the soil. So what we want to do is get the roots used to the soil. And working our way up. Oh, there we go. To discover why it's so important really to plant deep. new roots and reach new heights. To kick off our journey, we start in a place that is not exactly synonymous with trees. Harlem, New York. Are you wearing high heels right now? No, they're just like a little heel oh, on a hiking shoes. I'm Nature, but make it fashion. <laughs> Trekking up a New York City mountain. Come on, man. Don't worry about me, I'm just here carrying six chestnut trees. See, a large tree can provide enough oxygen for a family of four, so that'd be like all of us. And the American chestnut was once one of the largest trees on the East Coast. It could reach higher than a 10-story building, and it was wide enough to fit a car. Back at the turn of the century, the once dominating American chestnut was nearly eliminated by blight. That's a tree sickness that still exists today. Sarah Gibbons, National Geographic writer, covers it in this month's issue that's all about fixing forests. If we can figure out how to save the American chestnut, which is one of the first trees to really be overtaken by a horrible disease like this, then we might figure out how to save other trees, which would ultimately save our forests. If the chestnut tree is in such peril, how are there so many chestnuts in those roasted nut stands around New York City? Those are imported European chestnuts. Oh, those aren't, yeah. those aren't domestic chestnuts. They are not domestic chestnuts. All right, so we've made it to the chestnut part of our plantings. So we want to take these uh, disease-resistant trees, put them back to where they belong, and have them once again be part of the landscape. So let's pick that up. How about Miles and me, you and Adrian, we both race to see who can plant a tree faster. Let's do it. Dig fast. How's it going over there, Daddy? Go well. I think we're good. Okay, Age, ready to put the tree in? Yeah, oh cool. So that's really cool. It's spicy. All right, you want to do the, the final step. Okay, what's Is the final literally step? a step. Stepping on it. You got to step on all the soil, make sure it's right. nice. While our trees might not grow quite as large as their ancestors, they do represent a step in the right direction, especially in a city like New York. Okay, high five, babe. Yes. Our tree. Welcome to our chestnut tree. You know what they call that, guys? Circle of life. Circle of life. Yes, Simba! With those roots firmly in the ground, we head south to meet a scientist who has spent her life in the tree tops. Meg! Meg! Hi, guys. Ew. Welcome to Florida. Welcome to the tree tops. All right. Ooh. So my nickname is Canopy Meg. I am a National Geographic explorer, and I was one of the world's first arbor nuts. You know what an astronaut is, right? Guess what arbor nuts do? They explore the treetops. And she's not just an arbor nut, but also a detective, a leaf detective. Her job is to uncover the secret life of trees. We have to really save our big trees. We can't just plant a little tree and say it's OK to cut down the big trees. Right. We got to really save these senior citizens, as I call them. And while most trees do grow from the ground up, Meg brought us to one that grows in a different direction. This is my favorite tree in the whole world. 
This is called a fig tree, but there's about 800 species of fig, and specifically, there's about 300 called banyans. And see how they kind of walk? They look like they're walking. That's because they start life at the top of the tree. A fig bird poops out a seed on another tree, and they grow their roots down. These are new roots that are looking for soil, and when they hit the soil, then they'll grow into something like this. So this is a baby version it's of that. It's a baby version, wow. and that's what Tarzan hangs on. Banyan trees provide fig fruits that sustain so many species of birds, but it's also great for another reason. This is a tree so big, you can play hide and seek in it. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Ready or not, here I come. Where's my boys? I see a hand. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> okay, where's my other boy? Where'd he go? Ah. Ah. <laughs> I love scaring my mom mm -hmm. and my dad. <laughs> and my old definitely. Definitely. What? <laughs> Tell me this isn't the coolest tree you've ever seen in your entire life. It's so cool. It's amazing. And, and it's like a dinosaur holding us and yeah. saying, Hey, Edward, hey, Daddy. <laughs> Perfect for hide and seek. But also, these giant tree trunks carry water and nutrients from the ground all the way to the towering treetops, which is where we're headed next. This is actually the first public canopy walkway in North America, the whole continent. How tall, Meg? 35 feet for cool. the canopy bridge, 75 feet for the tower. This canopy walk in Florida's Mayaka River State Park is a portal to a place that most humans don't get to access, especially those who are a little more <clears throat> apprehensive. I feel like Indiana Jones, without any bravery whatsoever. Up here, scientists like Meg can literally get a bird's eye view, climbing into the forest ecosystem. We'll go whoa, whoa, oh. whoa, like that, and then you close the net tight. We'll go out there in the middle, and you can do that. Womp, womp, womp. Let's look and see if there's anything. Let's see see if what your womp, dad womp. found. There's a lot of seeds. Yep, I'm a guy, you're, I'm a seed you're guy. You're a plant guy. Oh, look, you got an acorn. It's amazing what a net will do. And the most scared daddy got was climbing stairs. Hands down. That were a full tower. <laughs> Meg, hold my hand. Here, I'll switch better, net. Okay, hold my hand, go. Meg. Okay. We don't want you to be scared. Thank you, Meg. Oh <laughs> my God. But you're going to love the view. Yeah, I hope so. The view is worth everything. <laughs> wow. I, I got to say, spending a day with an Arbonaut and with all these trees. I now have a new appreciation for trees. Our ascent to the sky was only the beginning. This time, we ditched the stairs for one final epic climb. So just around this corner wow. is our climbing tree. That's a big tree. That's a big tree. Is that great or what? We don't have these in New York. Oh, it's a beautiful big live oak. But to see these glorious behemoths from the ground just doesn't give you the full experience. So I'm suiting up to yeah, yeah, join yeah. the birds Would in the treetops 60 feet up. And this is, I imagine we're being very careful, this is not harmful to the trees. This is not harmful to the tree. When you get up to the top of the tree, you'll notice that the rope actually doesn't even run over the tree. There's a, um, a piece of webbing, which is like this, mm -hmm. that goes over the tree. It's called a cambium saver because if, you use, if your weight was on the tree, it would start rubbing yeah. it. Get me hooked up, buddy. Safety first. This is it. Yes, that's a good look. Push it straight up. Oh. Ah, I see. Like that. Pull your foot back up under. Okay. And the closer your chest is to the to the rope, the straighter you are, the less work it's going to be. Oh, there we go. Go, mommy, go. Go, mommy, go. No way, daddy's going that high. Go, mommy, go. There's no better place to branch out than at the canopy. Oh yeah. Being up there, you can really feel the importance of preserving our forests. Deforestation, invasive pests and disease, and of course climate change. They all threaten our oldest trees. And while planting new trees does help replace those that we lose, it's just as important to protect those that have been growing for hundreds of years. 
because bigger trees make more oxygen and they can hold more carbon dioxide. They're also a whole lot more fun to climb. You saw how much trouble Ginger was having getting up that tree. Well, luckily I found a much easier way. Pull! Oh. Oh. Pull! Keep going! Pull! I thought I was pretty up high, and then I saw Ginger. Mom was definitely a monkey. <laughs> yes. Mom is a spider monkey. Daddy is more like a beetle. To cap off a day in the trees, we could think of no better way than to sleep in one. Or three. We found the perfect spot. The perfect place to end our beautiful day of trees. Yeah. And we need three trees. Three strong trees to, that can hold the four of us. To pitch a tent. <laughs> this is a special tent. It's not going to be one on the ground, obviously, because of gators. Let's pitch a tent. Let's do it. Like so many other animals that sleep safely in the trees, we knew we'd rest well here, grateful for all the possible ways that trees can protect our planet. That's so cool, look at that, guys. Nice. Should we go in? Enter a spaceship. All thanks to trees. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>